Okay, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the task scheduler and how you can run some programs uh, without even having to be on the computer. Maybe you have a Windows server and you wanna run some kind of script every so often or some kind of program every so often. And today specifically we're going to show how do I run a Python script through the task scheduler at a set interval. And this is something I use at work on our Windows server. So uh, I thought maybe some people didn't know about it or don't know how to use it, or more importantly, don't know how to run Python on it. So let's go ahead and talk about that. And if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. That way you don't miss any fun content that I put out there. And just to recap, what is the Windows Task Scheduler? Wikipedia says the Task Scheduler is a job scheduler in Microsoft Windows that launches computer programs or scripts at predefined times or at specific time intervals. And today we're just going to create a Python script. I already have this folder created called Scheduled Tasks, and we're just gonna create a Python script that's going to write to a log so we know that it runs. I'm just going to call it task pi and first thing we're going to do i'm going to import date time because in this log i'm going to put some timestamps so we know when this ran in the log and we can verify that it ran with the task scheduler so let's go ahead and say file is equal to open and i'm just going to put the log in the same location so let me reveal it in the file explorer here and we'll copy this path and we'll say, here is the path that we want it. And we'll just name the text file uh, task.text. And then another parameter we have to give it what kind of mode is this. So for us, we're just going to append to what's already there. Okay, and then I'm going to do file.write. And we can say, we can give it an F string and say, um, here's the date time dot date time dot now. Um, the script ran and then we'll just give it a new line and let's see if this works so we'll go ahead and run this now we have this new text file that came up and i yeah i forgot to say open and close parentheses on this so let's save it um let's just delete this so it'll make a new one run it and that looks better now we have a timestamp and what we said to it. And now if I run it again, you can see we have a later timestamp by a few seconds, and that way we can see when this last ran. Okay, so we have our Python script now that we're going to run through the task scheduler. Now we just have to schedule that up. And it's actually pretty easy. They have a GUI and everything. You don't have to go through the command line. So actually first, I'm just going to delete the text file. And so it'll be fresh whenever the task scheduler runs. So in the bottom, I'm just going to um, search for task scheduler and we'll open that. And here you can see some already made tasks that are running on my computer from different applications, but we're going to go to the right here. Hopefully you can see it. it's probably pretty small, but we're gonna hit create task on the actions on the right. And here you can give it a name and a description. These are all arbitrary, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna say Python task, and the description is going to be um, a Python script that runs. And then maybe you want to run this as a different user. Here you can change what user you want it to run as, and then you probably want to run it whether the user is logged on or not. Especially if it's running on a server, um, whether the user is logged on kind of irrelevant. You just want it to run no matter what. Okay, so that's all for this tab. We'll go to triggers and here you can set um, how often you want it to run. When do you want it to run? So we'll hit new because there currently are no triggers. And we're going to start with one time. And I'm going to go ahead and say run today. Um, how about like 515 and then exactly at 515. And then at the bottom, I'm also going to say repeat every five minutes. So we're going to start this task or run this script at 5.15 today p.m. And then we're going to repeat it every five minutes uh, for a duration of indefinitely or forever. Maybe you have a different duration. Maybe you only want to run this every five minutes for the next seven days. You can change that. 
uh, but I'm just going to leave it so it just keeps running forever. And then down here, you can actually enable if you want, stop the task if it runs longer than, so maybe your task is in some kind of infinite loop, but you don't know about it because it's just running without you being there. You can go ahead and check this and say, if it's been running for more than 30 minutes, there's definitely a problem because you know your script doesn't take that long to run. And so you might want to enable that, but I'm just gonna leave that blank and make sure enabled is checked to enable this trigger. We'll hit okay. And here you can have multiple triggers if you wanted to, um, but we're just gonna have the one. And then actions, what are we doing whenever this is run? So we'll hit new. We want to start a program. You can see the other two uh, options are deprecated. So start a program. What program are we starting? You're probably thinking, well, we're just starting uh, the Python script. Well, actually we're starting Python that runs the Python script, but where does Python live? It's actually pretty easy to find. I'm just going to open up the command prompt and type where Python. And I'm going to take this first path right here. This local programs Python, Python 3.6, which is my version. And then Python exe, I'm going to paste that right here in the programs uh, script. And then in this add arguments, we're going to say, here's the name of the Python script. So if we go back, my Python script was named task.py. So task.py and then start in is going to be where this task.py lives. So reveal in the file explorer, I'll copy this path and then we'll paste it right here. We'll hit okay. And then when I hit okay here, it's going to um, ask for a password. And this is the password that I use to log into this computer with this account. And so you're going to have to do that. And now that I hit uh, okay after entering my password, you can see here we have this task that we just created added here. And it'll tell you when the next runtime is. So it hasn't ran yet. And that's why the last runtime is 11.30.1999. But now that it's 5.15, I'm going to head, go ahead and refresh. And you can see it did run at 5.15 because that was the last runtime. And now the next runtime is five minutes from now at 5.20. So now if I look, we should see a task text file. And we do. Here we can see that the script ran. And something else you can do, um, if you just want to run it to test it, and let's say your next runtime is a long time from now, and you want to make sure it runs, you can actually hit run, and this will manually run it. So let's go ahead and do that too. I'll hit run, we'll refresh, and you can see the last runtime is 5.15.46, because that's when I hit the run button. And the next runtime is going to stay the same as it was before. But if we look again, now we have another um, line in the log from when we manually ran it. And if you want your task to you know, live here, but you don't want to run it anymore, you can right click right here and hit disable on this task. So if I disable it, it will no longer run, even though it says next runtime is at 520 because it's disabled, it will no longer run. And you can also go back, um, double click it, and change any of the actions, or maybe you wanna change the trigger up, um, you can go ahead and edit what you already set it to uh, when you created this. So that's how you can run Python in a scheduled task. Hopefully you find this useful if you're looking to run something like this on a server, and you're like, how do I run uh, this Python script at a set interval? Hopefully this helps. So thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and stay tuned. I think in my next video, we're going to do the same thing we did here, but we're going to do it with a .NET console application, which is very, very similar, but maybe you're interested in that too, so stay tuned.